On this episode, episode 80, yes, 80 of the podcast, I'm going to talk about criminals, pools, right, not pools, but pools, and beeps. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the show. And I'm fully aware for video watcher, I pretty much look like a floating face. Uh, I will one day maybe get some, uh, what's the word I'm after? Proper lighting. I don't know. Anyway, let I'll just... Let's get into the stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, everybody, to another edition, another episode of the Luke Who's Talking podcast with me, Luke. Or is it Luke Whom? No, it's not Whom. Who's? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Hope you're going all right out there. Hope, uh, yeah, you know, you're, you're doing things, you're thinking about things, you're fantasizing about whatever. Um, and you're just, you know, living life the best you can. You know, people who don't live their lives particularly well, criminals. Now, I've been watching some crime shows lately and just, it is comical how often the crim in said shows keeps, a, they either keep a piece, piece of key evidence or do a really crappy job of getting rid of said key evidence. Right, or alternatively, right, they go to extreme lengths to like engineer a situation and engineer an alibi, and just all fall, falls apart. I mean, I guess that's pretty standard crim law, isn't it? But you watch a show and you and you have know, their searching. They're like, oh, you look at this. Oh, yeah, we found a whatever. There's you know, something that directly ties them to the crime, and you just like, what are you doing? Like, seriously, keeping key evidence. Ah, oh, it's just sloppy work, sloppy work. I've got a text, uh, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. There we go. But, yeah, and you just, you just like, um, watch like a crime show or whatever. And like, oh, yeah, you know, I wore a pair of shoes at the crime scene. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep them. So then the old Rosses turn up and they're like, oh, yeah, so, you know, there was footprints of a X, Y, Z footprint. And I was just like, oh, you know, like, mate, just burn them, chuck them out, do something. You know, seriously. Keeping key evidence. Wow. Obviously, I've written this down because I must have been watching something specific and I was like, why do they do this? I've completely forgotten what specifically I was watching. Obviously, something where... You know, the criminal keeps a piece of key evidence that directly ties them to the crime. What are they doing? I don't know. Let's move on because I've got nothing else to say about this. My God. <laughs> uh, so the other week, a friend of mine, uh, it was their birthday. So a group of us, it was about seven of us, uh, myself included, we went out to, uh, we had a few wines. So we went to a little snazzy wine bar in town and consumed three bottles. And then uh, I was like, oh man, I'm not a big wine drinker, but I think I had like four or five glasses, um, if I'm honest. I probably should have sat on it a bit more, but I didn't. And then there was one point there where uh, there was three of us in a discussion about getting another bottle and I was like ah maybe we could get a red and they were like yeah so we got a red of something so I mean I was probably more into the wine um, than I probably should have been I don't know anyway what else? so we consumed wine which was fine and after that we went to we went to another place where things I, I don't know if I'd use the term escalated but uh it was it was interesting because we we went to this, this other place we went to sort of like uh, out the back as it were and sat on like a bench thing seat and uh you know we're just there having a jo having a jovial time anyway next to us there was a table of boys and i have no idea how but one of the boys ended up on our table and they were apparently uh, a bit smitten is that the word? I'm going to use that word with somebody um, at our table. And there was like a, there was a pool attempt 
happened, which was shut down like pretty quickly. Um, and that, that just escalated into the, the said boy getting trolled a bit, getting, you know, savaged. But uh, it was quite comical. But And <laughs> it was really funny because um, this particular boy was like, oh, I don't know how a conversation started. But the Whoever, the, the person that they were trying to pull – must have asked them, or somebody on our table, I can't remember, must have asked, like, oh, what, what, do, you, what do you do? Where are you at? And they're like, well, I'm in education. Making it sound like they're real, like, you know, I'm better than all yous because I'm going to be a teacher one day. Uh, that said, uh, <laughs> a, a friend, two, two friends, actually. One friend um, at, at our table was a lawyer. So that probably trumps teacher if you want to be like, you know, going on a, a hierarchy of jobs or whatever, if you're into that thing. I mean, socially people seem to. And then also somebody else uh, at our table is a uh, environmental scientist, I believe is their sort of title. So, I mean, they're like, yes, yeah, so I'm getting into education right i'm going to teach all the children um and i mean i feel that i don't think mr mr lawyer uh would have probably necessarily have said but i feel that there was there, there was a good chance that it didn't happen but a chance that our our, our scientist could have could have said well i'm a scientist or like i'm an environmental whatever uh, so that's like sort of trumps your, <laughs> your, your educate, Mr. Education. Ah, oh, and also this, this bit was ridiculous. There's somebody with us and they work for themselves, right? They're like a, a freelance, uh, designer, if I remember correctly. And so there was like a, a, a start around a table or something like, oh, what do you do? And this, this person was like, I'll work for myself. And the person, I'll call from the pool boy, they couldn't grasp the concept that this person, you know, worked for themselves and they didn't have any co-workers or colleagues. That was, they were like, they couldn't understand that concept, which was ridiculous i found it's like it's not hard surely not hard to understand i mean they, they were probably a liberal voter so you know burn but um yeah they, they couldn't get the idea of so i have my own like business which contains me and that's it i'm my own co-worker my own boss my own manager they're just like oh so and i think they might have asked oh so do you have people that work underneath you and they're like no it's just me i run my own business i'm just me so that was really comical that i couldn't grasp the concept of um you know being your own person in the workplace which i thought was interesting and uh now you're not uh, you're not the first person. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. If you think the per if you think the person not quite grasping the idea of uh, somebody working for themselves and being their own boss is slightly comical, get a load of this. I was telling this story to somebody the other day. I, was, I said, oh, you know, I went out the other uh, yeah, on the weekend, and a friend of mine somebody tried to pull them now when i use the term pull they i have no idea why but they were like oh pulled off and i was like no the person's a woman for starters but i was just like why would you go straight to that? i was like why would you go straight to that and i said no like pull like as in uh somebody tried to pick them up and they're like oh 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 what what anyway whatever 
Yeah, so um, went out. There was a, I mean, it sounds a lot more spicy than probably what it was. But, yeah, went out um, the other weekend, had some wine, had some snazzy bubbly water as well, actually. Um, and, yeah, somebody tried to, uh, a, an attempt to uh, swoon somebody at um, our, from our group, which... I don't know, I wouldn't say they're unswoonable, but you've got to be a bit more uh, chivalrous, I'd have to say, than, than what this guy was. He had a big nose as well, so. Hmm. Oh, and he did some shushing as well. It was like shush, 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 shush. And when somebody was talking, and I was like, wow, that's, you're done. You're done. Anyway, <laughs> have you got, here's a question for you, uh, Listen, if you got any stories, you, you might have been out with some friends and uh, somebody's tried to uh, swoon somebody in your group. How'd it go? Let me know. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's get into the like bit and uh, wrap it up. <clears throat> so, the actually, the week, uh, sort of the Friday, wow, words, the Friday before the, uh, the, the going out. Uh, I I did a, a a beep test. So you know, if you might have done this at school, typically, uh, you know, the thing would be like beep level one, and then you just run along and you go beep, and it, you know, it gets faster. So I did a uh, did a well, my physio referred to it as a fitness test. Uh, I was like, okay, so I did a a beep test. Uh, I hadn't done one for two or three years. I'm going to yawn, and um, hadn't done one for a couple of years. And uh, so the physio was like, yeah, you do one. And I was like, okay, if you join me. So they joined me for, I don't know how far we got, a little bit, but they were like, I'm doing this under medical advice. I'm like, okay then, you know, it's fine, eh? uh, that's just their excuse because I wrecked them. But, uh, <laughs> but um, so I, I did a, or do a modified one. So we run 10 meters, I think, it might be 20 on the rig. No, sure, it's not 20. It's 15. I don't know. Anyway, I do a modified one. So it's t a 10 meter shuttle, I think they call it. It's a 10 meter run. And so, anyway, I'm not sure how you would particularly count it, but the, the physio, actually, not the physio, the dietitian, she had a chart and it was like a, a triangle. So it had like one, you know, at the top, and then the next one had two and three, the next one it had uh, four, five, uh, six, and yes, yeah, so on. And I'm pretty sure it went all the way to 150. So once you got to like 150, you had, you like had beaten the test. So I managed to get to, I think it was 138 or something like that out of it. It was 100, and, it was the mid 130s I got to. I think it was a hundred. Might have been one hundred and thirty-four. I mean, it was more than one hundred and thirty-three, and not one hundred and forty. It was somewhere in between there. I got to. I, I bet my. I bet I beat. Wow, I did better than my previous one. So I improved my PB. That's the main thing. Um, <laughs> so, yes. So I got to, like I saw. I mean, I'm, I'm going to claim that I almost beat the test, and. The physio actually stopped me because when it was, well, you get, you can miss two cones. Like, so you have the opportunity to like miss two cones on the, on the thing. So I missed obviously two cones for, um, yeah, missed two cones. So the physio pulled me up and stopped me. And I was like, okay, probably could have kept going, but fine. But I was mildly cooked at the time. So yeah, did a beep test. I'm going to claim I almost beat it. So, and if you go over to the vlog, uh, Luke, who's vlogging, there is a video on there of me doing said beep test. So it starts off, you know, slow. So I've sped it up so you don't have to watch. I think that the, when I got all the video off the camera, it was about 15 minutes. So I was like, you don't want to, you don't want to watch me run for like 15 minutes. So I've sped, it, it is sped up, but then at the end, if I recall, um, I, I put it back to regular speed so you can see me, you know, running and, and failing at the end. But uh, yes, I did a beep test, fun times. And it hurt parts of my body that, um, you know, riding 100 kilometers on my bike doesn't hurt, which was, you know, yeah, interesting. Anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's wrap it up. 
Well, everybody, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. When I was putting, when I was writing down some notes, I was like, oh, this one is going to be an absolute doozy. I mean, it's probably better than the last episode, but sometimes you're just like, I mean, of the episodes, I don't know, the screen, come on, wake up, lovely. Um, yeah, anyway, everybody, <laughs> thanks very much for uh, for watching and listening, but mainly listening. Yeah, more people listen. But thanks for watching if you watched. Um, if you want to watch, you can head over to Luke Who's Talking on YouTube and you can watch some video companion, there is, to this, of course. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can send me an email if you want at uh, Luke Who's Talking pod at gmail.com. Run the tweets at L underscore Who's Talking. And, uh, yeah, that's all I've got for you. So thanks very much for listening and uh, watching and all that jazz. And, hey, if you want to share it with a friend, that would be okay, but if you don't want it, I'm not your boss yet. Uh, yeah, anyway, everybody, thanks very much, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.